All right. Well, we are here, and this is a map I've actually never seen before, but it has a high focus on fish. It's called Row Rage, a play on words with Road Rage. And uh, you're going to see a lot of fish and uh, a lot of eggs, apparently, as that's what Row is. It is fish eggs. So we've got eight players. We've got eight kings. The kings will explode. You probably know the drill by now, but if you don't know the drill, exploding kings can be pretty crazy. But let's introduce the players. We have, in the red, power to the people. Power to the peoples playing as the Aztecs. They already started with a lot of villagers, too, so their economy should get flying here. Um, in the blue, we have Bubba Kowalski, who I just call Bubba, experienced community game player, playing as the Mongols as well. Bubba should probably be people's focus later on, I have to say, because uh, the Mongols with a player who I think is the highest rated, dangerous combination. In the green, we have Nerdy Monk. Nerdy Monk is playing as the Saracens. In the teal, we have Nuka Crypt. However, one of the viewers here who Nuka Crypt is friends with is named Arbase. I don't know if Arbase is in chat exactly, but I know Arbase will hear about this. Nuka Crypt added to the end of his name when he saw he was going to get in. This is for you, Arbase. So I don't know exactly what's going on there, but interesting storyline uh, as he plays as the Ethiopians. Uh, in the orange, we have Ken Beamer. Ken will. Say, this is not how you say my name. It's apparently not Beamer. It's like Beamer or Beamer or... I don't know. Beamer makes sense to me. Uh, Ken's already talking to some of the lower ELO players trying to form uh, a little alliance. Uh, Ken's playing as the Poles. In the yellow, we have Mr. Cat. Mr. Cat is playing as the Malians. In the uh, magenta or purple, we have Supplies, who is playing as the Tatars probably for the first time in his life as he always plays with the Goths, which is ironic because Goths don't get supplies, but he likes infantry. And then last, but not least, we have a player who has been in community games like two times, maybe three times now over the last six months. And this individual has always tried to play Puppet Master. There's been two of them that at least that went to YouTube. That's why I think it was two. But anyways, look for Gray to chat a lot but not actually do something until maybe later on in the game. But Gray is a big fan of trying to get everyone on the side, and he will occasionally tell a lie here or there, so I'm excited for that. Um, that's our introduction. Those are the eight players. There will be one winner, uh, or there will be thousands of winners of people who eventually watch this, so I guess we'll see. But yeah, so let's look at the map. So you start with uh, fish around your TC, and that's a really fast source of food income, so that's tuna. You also have boars. You have berries and deer. Uh, looks like there's a decent amount of gold, but eventually you'll want to expand to some of the other gold areas. Uh, the middle has dolphins. Dang, dolphins and salmon. Yo, let's go. And I'm actually not sure if you can dock that. I feel like you cannot dock uh, stone terrain. So, And uh Apart from that, I mean, you heard the dolphins just making noise. The woods kind of spread around the outer ring. Uh, but there's obviously wood chunks elsewhere as well. I guess I, the, the important thing about the middle will be a lot of extra stone and gold. And apparently you can dock it here. Oh, okay, cool. So that's good to know. Yeah, and you can also dock on the sides here. Okay, so this is an example of them docking on stone, right? So yeah, so you actually have different areas where you can take fish on the sides of each base too. Yo, GS Healer, I was just... My frustration was not actual frustration. Don't worry about it, okay? You don't have to apologize for, for TC dropping me in the previous game. It definitely made the earlier stages more entertaining. Okay, so let's just catch up to speed on some of the chatter that has happened. There's been a bit of that. Uh, nothing too crazy. But very early, there was a message. Carter and supplies only to you. We are low elo. We should have each other's back. And uh, Carter immediately responded. And then, what's this map? Doing quite great. I'm in a community game with y'all, aren't I? Okay, so Gray's talking about how good life is because he got rigged in. What else do we have? Supplies is confused and doesn't understand the map. And, okay, that's about it. Nothing too crazy at the end of the day, I guess. Uh, Shulker, the first game was random cost mod. I always love the Mezzo Kings, dude. They look so cool. Also, they're you gotta respect it, man. They're like they're kind of fit as well. Right? Like some kings get old and plump and they don't really care about their their people, so they just live the high life. But the, this king is out and moving around. 
you can tell this king actually contributes in some ways. But he's contributing with the inefficiency there as he walks by. But yeah, there goes the king. And right into the castle he goes. You can't blame him. I would probably get into the castle as well. But let's talk to, about Bubba. Again, I think Bubba is the highest rated player here. Bubba says, hey, Red, only to you. I'm to your right. Want to be friends. And Ken says, man, this is very different from Black Forest on Vubly. Please give me some time. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of differences. You got quality life features to work with here. Probably don't have as much lag. It sounds rough. <laughs> but I mean, honestly, just like I've never gone back to Vubly because it's like so many steps back, at least for me. But like, I can't imagine switching game versions at this point. There's so many different feel. It's just a different outlook or not outlook, but just like, yeah, just a different feel to it. Hmm. Bubba. So Red just says yes. Bubba says, I'll talk to Green to see if we can secure trade. Also, be wary of Gray. His reputation perceives him. Okay, so this is Bubba. Bubba's here every Friday. And Bubba knows that Gray is a chatterbox behind the scenes. The very good from a high-level player to reach out to the others, form an early alliance, set up trade, but then also warn the others. Mr. Katz is player six and eight. We are the bottom of the score. Want to ally? So that includes Ken and supplies who are apparently already going to be with Crazy Carter. And now Nerdy Monk. So, so speaking of, um, so speaking of Vubly. So before the definitive edition, you could do exactly what Green just did, and you could type the player number, and it would it would type only to that player number. So it's like an easier way to do diplomacy. Um, I'm sure you guys know because it took two and a half years to finally get spec chat here in the definitive edition. We don't have that feature here either. So um, I, I haven't, I, I got to report that again, Macy. Uh, maybe, sorry, where's my brain going right now? I got to chill. Sheesh, but yeah, hopefully we can get that someday. But green doesn't know that doesn't work, which could be a concern because green just basically said greater than one sure to everybody. It was a great feature to have. I missed that. Uh, hey, they tell lies sometimes like gray, I think, says Bubba. Yeah, so Bubba knows. Now, here's the thing about people like Crazy Carter, okay? I feel like for a lot of my legends, because I think a lot of people out there are like, man, if I get in a T90 community game, I need to play this way or I need to do this thing. I want to be in a legend video. Not everybody, but, you know, like some of my live viewers here could say, like, that might be the dream for some. Everyone wants to have like something unique. And so Gray is all about the Diplo, right? But if you go, if you try enough times and fail, now Gray has gotten very close to a victory. But if you continue to play towards that reputation, then people start to pick up on it. And then you can't really get away with it as much anymore. But, you know, some people commit, some people change their ways. Let's see. Red, blue, one to team. We'll have lots of great trade, and our sieves are very strong together. Now, this is a harder sell because Bubba's already been talking about how Gray can't be trusted. All Crazy Carter wants to do is be friends with everybody here. That's what Crazy Carter does. Hmm. Yeah, Gray couldn't find this scout earlier. <laughs> and I now found it. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so Blue says... Uh, Red, I got green on our side to secure trade. Also, I'll accept Gray's offer for now, but I know he is tricky. Just Diplo's around and doesn't fight, unless I'm thinking of someone else. Yeah, honestly, that's the best way to describe Crazy Carter. Now, in defense of Crazy Carter, and Crazy Carter, if you rewatch this, please don't be offended, it's not like he's the craziest skilled player we've ever seen in community games. So you got to work with what you've got, right? It's I, I don't think Crazy Carter's like a player who's like 1,600 ELO, dominating the 1v1 ladder, and then comes in here and just chills and does Diplo and doesn't fight. He's a solid player, right? He's in Castle Age now. He's going to add economy. But I think that uh, Crazy Carter does it to get an edge. Someone in chat's been uh, tricked by Crazy Carter before. Also, Crazy Carter got Vikings with random Civ last week as well. So what are the chances? That, that would happen again here. Man, Nuka's name is confusing me so much because I always think he's saying this is for you, our base. 
But I wonder what his plans are. Ken says, Carter, only to you. You still have me as enemy. <laughs> that's, that's actually kind of funny. Uh, you could tell Gray immediately wanted to fix that. Uh, Ken says, us newbies should stick together. Bubba's doing... So, like, the thing is, if you're top scorer, and people might know Bubba's reputation too, and your Mongols as well, like, all these things go against Bubba in the long term, um, at least from the Diplo side. Like, Blue's being really nice. Red, if you make a monastery, I'll uh, give you some relics since you get gold bonus. Which is a really nice thing to give to the Aztecs. Red's also playing really well. Red is actually the highest score, and Red is the most villagers. And power to the people says, nice, best teammate ever. Um, I'm so stupid, very much so. Don't worry, we're all stressed. All my hotkeys, they're not the same as Voobly. Yeah, see, that's that's no. an issue, right? If your hotkeys aren't working properly, yikes. It's really hard to play the game that way. And Crazy Carter, just taking the time to look over here and chat. I mean, Eureka's actually very nice, though. Why the military buildings? These guys are chatting, and then the other guys are all business. And Blue's like, Green wants some relics. All right, I thought I'd ask before I go around the map snagging him up. Now, guys, Blue found the middle, but everyone's allied together so they can see what the others have seen. So there should be no secrets here. As it stands, um, I believe that like, it could be red and blue against the world. Red's a little silent. Red's not as chatty as blue. Let's just put it that way. But red's really good, so red might be threatened by the Mongols in late game. And now Nuka declares war on everybody. Which is very weird. And Nuka says, Bravo 6, going dark. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> he sends out, like, a radio message. And he's going dark to everybody, and now he's moving out. Oh my god, what? <laughs> that is epic. I really hope this... <laughs> I really hope this works. Remember, there can be explosions, guys. So if the kings die, there's explosions, and I don't think people are used to people turning at this stage of the game. Um... Nuka, why we friends? And everyone's trying to figure out exactly what's happening. Now, green does not see this at all. And so what Nuka could have done is Nuka could have looked around and seen where the castle, uh, where the kings were because the castles would have flags on it. So he does actually have an idea. <laughs> He's got a little seal team of, of uh, crossbows and trebuchets looking for a king snipe. Nerdy Monk is top score, man. Only making camels. Uh, this is this is such a small group, though. I know it's like the greatest crossbows in the entire country, but still, I mean, it should be fairly easy for Green to get away from here and make army to deal with this, you'd think. Like, you've got to run in with the crossbows now to have a chance at this. Green has not reacted yet. Now Green sends the army, but the king is going to run this way. And as long as Green just garrisons that king, Green's going to be completely fine. And Green, obviously, is going to turn on Nuka. And Arbalest is actually in, but no fletching. Well, SEAL Team forgot some of the basics over here. Uh, good job from Green to defend, I guess. And Nuka, you're not going to make many friends with people this way. Now, where's your king going? Nuka's mission has failed. The only thing Nuka has been successful with is making a ton of enemies. Where's his king going? And now he just says plan B. Oh, God. So he's just going to send his king at somebody right now. He's just going to commit suicide? He's, he's a terrorist. So he's going to run to Bubba? He's going to run to Bubba's base. Oh, my God. This is so, so bad for Bubba. Even if Bubba saves the king, this will be awful. Okay, there goes the king. Again, this is a bomb. Guys, this is a bomb. Blue's talking all this strategy. And uh, thankfully for him, he doesn't have ballistics right now. 
You can tell Nuka is very uh, on the fence about this. Like, part of Nuka is like, I'm not sure I want to do this. And is still making army. Bubba says, I'm fighting Teal. Obviously, like, I don't even think Blue realized the king ran through there. And I guess Nuka feels like the AoE gods just decided against Blue being the one that dies because the castle had a chance. So the king is just going to continue to run around. There is a hole there. Excuse me. Excuse me. Pardon me. I mean, Red's king is right there. And this could be it for Red. Oh, wait. Oh, Red is still allied to Teal. Red is still allied to Teal. Red didn't even react. And now Nuka just deletes his king. Now we have these animations of all these dead units. Because that's like a warning for people. So if you hear that noise and see that in your base, you need to run. And Red, oh, Red noticed. Red noticed. Red noticed. But can Red get away? This could also lead to, to Crazy Carter dying, guys. Red is dead. That's so brutal for Red. I feel so bad. Nuka, score, Nuka gets top score because of all the kills. Congratulations, Nuka. I'm sure you're happy. Red probably hates your guts. Red's not going to be about happy about that one. And neither is Crazy Carter. Because Crazy Carter is going to get some of this. Now, I don't think Crazy Carter is going to get hit by all of it. So I'm sure that freaks out Crazy Carter. But yeah, that's the end. And Crazy Carter laughs. And now we've got six people remaining just like that. Supply says, oh no, we are all friends forever remember. Well, clearly not. Unless friends, you know, explode each other like that. Wow. Okay, so that changes everything. I mean, also the relics are gone, which is kind of sad for Bubba because he donated relics to a guy who's now lost them. It wasn't Red's fault. It was just Nuka. Maybe not having the time. Maybe Nuka needed to be on a work call and he just said, I'm... My plan didn't work originally, so this is how I'm going to back it up. Um, I have had instances where people have a work call, and because of a work call, they just make it quick. Anyways, 112 eco is the leading eco count. That is now with Mr. Cat, which is not what I expected earlier. And Mr. Cat has three castles, good economy, like we said, and seems to be wanting to trade down to this corner. Ken's going to make some stone walls here in this corner as well. <laughs> I'm like... I mean, I'm sure Nuke is disappointed as well. The, the Bravo 6 going dark thing was freaking hilarious. <laughs> that was hilarious. But it was followed up by not having fletching, which uh, didn't make the moment quite as exciting. I mean, Red was going to make a move over here as well, and now Red's... Everything's just stopped right in its tracks. So... They might not know it, but it was good for red. Uh, or sorry, not good for red. Good for yellow and purple and probably gray. That Nuka did that. I think blue's coming over here to look around and see what's left. But you are allied with red, so you'd be able to see what's left. He's probably looking for the relics there. I don't know how many he donated, but it was at least two. Hmm. I just realized that having Exploding Kings for Regicide Rumble would mean the easiest 25 bucks ever. Yeah, it would. I don't know. In the next time we do Regicide Rumble, though, I don't think we're going to do Exploding Kings. I think we'll probably do pure Regicide. Didn't have the eco for Fletching. Went fast. Went Imp as soon as possible. Yeah, but when you make it to Imp, you get plus 100 food and plus 100 gold. Checkmate. Yeah, you could have used plus 100 food and plus 100 gold to afford Arbalest, I suppose. But you can't tell me you couldn't get fletching. You had your ears gold. Actually, your eco was horrible. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Yeah, maybe you're right. <laughs> maybe you were right. You had 30 villagers. That was a really good fast imp timing, though, I have to say. Well, green, who you want to go for? And Nerdy Monks is still rebuilding for that sudden attack from Leon. All right. So that's like. It's a green is saying still rebuilding, which I mean, you did lose a castle and like maybe a stable or something, but green's basically like, I'm not ready. Um, green says, I'm worried about that trade south starting, and yeah, so basically the other guys are going to team up against them, right? Hmm, I think one of the most underrated looking unique units in the game is the Gabetto, and I'm not talking about like 
They are beautiful, I'm not, but I'm not trying to make it weird is all I'm saying, all right? Because we're seeing the back end of them. Anyways, the way that... Yeah, there we go. Look at the way they toss the um, their little weapons in the air and just catch it flawlessly every time. Like, they don't have a single nick on their arms or anything. Ooh, that's awesome. They have some great hand-eye coordination there. But anyways, it's a good unit for community games, I think. Because it is high damage against buildings, and obviously has a bit of range as well. I don't think it's your only. It should be only, your only unit, though. Uh, they are weak against range units like Mangadai. They would struggle against siege, but if you combine that with maybe some stable units from the Malians, it could be strong. I will claim until I die that Malians are top three save design. Until you die, whoa quite a stand to make i mean i would ag agree that they were up there in terms of like really like balance as well uh until they the they stole the gold bonus and gave it to the bohemians but we don't need to get too in depth on that they're still a solid sieve but they felt perfect they were not too op they were not too weak they had really strong points in like competitive games anyways uh when they had that gold mining upgrade or gold Gold mining bonus coming in immediately. Beautiful. But hey, now you have gold longer, so that's uh that's nice. Exciting. So Ken's like, listen, Matt, your mercy. I don't know what to do. You tell me what to do. Ken's like, I know my place. I don't even have my hotkeys working. I just want to work for the team here. Holy monks, though, Ken. I'm not sure if this many monasteries is necessarily needed. We do have the markets going up for blue in the north. Crazy Carter has been remarkably silent, guys. Not what I expected from him. Obviously, he did lose some of his base, laughed a little bit. But I was expecting more chatter, excuse me, from Crazy Carter. But maybe we still have time for that. Here's the stockpile of all the resources, if you're curious. Supplies actually has the most right now. But also might not be spending gold quite like blue has, because blue's gotten crazy expensive force i think if blue were to decide to kill anyone right now it would be easy kill except for maybe berbers actually that's oh it's saracens never mind actually saracens are also really good against the mongols if they get their camel numbers hey purple are you allied to gray Ooh, now supplies is let me think of the word for supplies let's say wholesome I don't think Supplies would be the type of person to want to backstab Gray or talk about Gray behind his back. And now Mr. Cat wants to talk to Gray, but the chat settings aren't set to talk to Gray, so Gray's not going to hear it. Mm. More people talking to Gray. And Supplies says, I don't want to be blue. The supplies says, oh, I've seen the vids. All right, so they've done their homework. Supplies doesn't need to say anything more. Bubba obviously knows what that means. And now Blue also went, hey, Gray, is purple allied with you? So Blue got to hear purple doesn't want to be allied there. Gray, what are you doing in my base? Crazy Carter says you mean the lumber camp yellow. Bubba's saying, I don't trust him, but I'm not in the best position since Red died. All of this is true. Not a lot of deceit going on right now, besides the fact they're talking behind Gray's back. And then Crazy Carter says, I'm not that good of friends with Purple, basically, with that response. Hmm. And says, Gray is low elo. Don't think he is dangerous. Don't trust him when you ask him. Or on whose team he is. Hmm. Interesting. Lots of Diplo. Lots of chillaxing right now. And, uh, you know, probably a point of the game where I say I hope everyone's having a nice day. Nice life. Nice hour. Nice minute. Out there. And, oh! Oh my god. Green's not, though. Green's not. Yep. Hope you're having a good time. Green is going to get backstabbed again. And... Gabetto should be really good against camels. Especially... When green doesn't have yellow set on enemy, which green now fixes. Now these camels, guys, these camels have 170 HP. However, they do not very good in melee engagements. 
uh, or against ranged units, unless, of course, the melee engagement is up against, like, something like a knight, or that knight line. And, wow, green's just getting wrecked, which should lead to blue helping green, because green made it very clear he's not in the best position since red died. So it makes sense that blue comes to help, and green is actually running towards blue's base right now in fear. Ken is converting what's left of Nuka's base, which explains the monks. <laughs> That's one way to get economy. Oh, man. So Supplies is talking to Blue about a plan. Green needs help right now. And I'm not sure if Blue picked up on this at the moment, but Blue's adding tons of production buildings. But like I said, like, Gabetto is a great sniping unit, and okay, Blue has noticed this, and this is where I think the Gabetto are going to be weak in comparison. You've got 45 HP, 5 range, or is it 6? Excuse me, 6 range. Think that I have 7 range, 12 attack, they fire way faster, and they have more mobility. So the Gabetto against Archers, not so good. Sad times for Yellow. Yellow made 2 enemies now. Whoa, 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 whoa. Gray said, no green, don't do it. And Gray signaled green's king. And he said this to everybody. So he's like, maybe going to make blue think that green was going to commit suicide there. But no, green's just trying to stay safe. And Crazy Carter is has PTSD because of the other king that went off near his base earlier. This is what Nuka has done. Okay. The so green obviously hasn't had time to say a lot. I'm sure green is just overwhelmed. And the king's just going to come back home now that things are safe. But honestly, guys, like, even if it was just green and blue against the other four, I feel like green and blue against the other four could win. But now that we have, like, gray and purple not trusting each other, apparently, I think it's all very good for Bubba. Red dying was actually great for Bubba. Yellow's going to turn on Bubba now, which I guess wasn't the case before. <laughs> Um, and Ken says, I have my chat on for gray, purple, yellow. Are we a team? I have those Polish chunkers. Blue says, hey, purple, I'm attacking yellow, and orange might join in. All right. So they're just trying to get yellow to be killed off here. There's obviously number two in the game. Someone, like, when blue starts to really push yellow, the others... Usually, you're going to need to band together at that point and figure it out. Grace is orange. Bad idea talking only to you. I think green and blue are up to something. Yes. But I don't know about this team. Which is all fair. And yellow saying, yeah, I need help. Now, what I'd like to see yellow do is mix in some cab in front. Um, he's missing some cab upgrades, though, so that's a concern. Yeah, Bubba, probably the best player in the game, has randomed into one of the best civilizations in the game. But it looks like Ken is actually going to be here to help, and he does have Elite Gabetto. Or Elite... Uh, sorry, not Elite Gabetto. Well, what's happening over here, though? Supplies turns on Crazy Carter. He's going to go kill Crazy Carter! And I quote, I've seen the vids. Now, guys, look at the eco count for Crazy Carter. Crazy Carter had no interest in helping anybody with these attacks. Right? So, like, normally I'd say, oh, my God, Purple, why are you attacking Gray? Oh, my God, you're attacking Gray. Gray was actually going to help. I don't think Gray was actually going to help. I think he was just going to hope that he would be near the end and he could chat. But certainly, like, he could have tried to convince him. Man, these old books are loud. Is this breaking anyone else's eardrums? Why are they ten times louder than everything else? Oh my god, Gray is on the move right now, and the Step Lancers are there from the Tatars and Pokey Poke. Down goes Crazy Carter without a peep. He's out of the game. Again, 170 uh, eco right now. Had more. 13,000 gold. Dies. There will be an explosion in a second. And Ken is heartbroken. And Bubba's loving life. Bubba's so satisfied with that situation. And he says, as it stands, I'm going to lose to yellow and orange. So he's basically like, I need you, Supplies. And Supplies says, he needed it. Sorry. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> okay. Bubba's going to ask for help. I'm not sure I agree, by the way, with Bubba's assessment of the situation. But it is interesting how green isn't really being brought into any of the strategy discussion. 
Seeing the vids, he is not trustworthy. All right. This is what I meant before, though, right? You only have so long before like, where you can, like, take advantage of a, a, a reputation like that. To be fair to Crazy Carter, he wasn't being that sneaky behind the scenes this game. Right? Like, in this particular game, he had a couple instances where he's talking to different teams, but it wasn't that big of a deal this game. So I feel, feel a little bad for him there. But that's something for him to think about if he gets in again. Yeah, Green's going to have Hussars for the time being. I'm just going to keep it on stockpiles so we could see who has the most gold. But, I mean, obviously, Gray was clearly at the top. And maybe the play is to not push blue at all and to just take out green's king. That way blue is kind of isolated on his own. Um, supplies. I'm not sure where his allegiances lie at the moment. It doesn't seem like he's really talking to yellow much. But yellow is like trying to talk to him and Ken, right? And green might see this, or a green was coming for a raid and will encounter this. But Obuk and Gabetto, uh, this is, especially if they get into choke point, this is just really bad for the Hussars. It's probably the best possible surround green could have gotten, but look how many Gabettos stack in one spot. There's 40 of them there. And so now green will know that it's also Ken. Supplies says, orange, yellow, we still friends. Super promise. Okay. And Ken says, I will spare you, Supplies. <laughs> so Ken has really built up some confidence. Ken went from, I don't know what to do, you tell me what to do, to I will spare you in like 20 minutes. And Supplies says, I'll go green for you. And here come these uh, these Keshiks. It's actually a mix of Keshiks and Step Planters, which is really freaking rare, really cool too. Gotta love that. Uh, Bubba says are at the very least purple. And Supplies turns on blue. Wow, Supplies turns on blue. I was not expecting that. So green is kind of on the ropes. Green will continue to have some struggles. And now blue doesn't have purple on his side. Yeah, blue is pushing in though. And I guess purple's here to come help. So I thought this was going to be... Uh, I thought Supplies was going to decide to just team up with blue and that it would give blue and green an easier time, but that's not happening. And blue doesn't realize it's been turned. Hey, now he does. He just is sad, but the Keshiks and the Step Lancers, despite having no attack upgrades, are doing a great job. So I don't know. I don't have the exact math for, done for you guys, but with the way uh, Step Lancers engage because they can attack from one tile away, it is actually more efficient to have, like, if we're, let's say we're using 40 as the military count, to have, like, 25 knights, or Keshiks in this case, and 15 step lancers than it is to have just full knights. Is a little dependent, I suppose, on, like, what unit you're up against and exactly how you micro it. But just because if it's full standard melee units, there's a lot of more bumping, and the step lancers can kind of hit from behind. Also, it, it's not as much gold, so... Ken is upset because his stolen base is now being attacked. Because <laughs> he converted the majority of this stuff. The green got his revenge in his own way. But yeah. Like, blue blue has full trade, though. Right? Full trade. Tons of fortifications. Elite Mangadai. And a Saracen meat shield of camels that have 170 HP. The best composition in the game, if we're talking teams right now, is quite simply the Mangadai and the Saracen Camels. There's nothing that can stop that, really. Like, maybe you have Tatar Cav Archers with Malian Camels. But the Cav Archer's worse than a Mangadai, and the, these Camels are worse. Especially if they don't get Farimba, which gives them plus five attack. Yellow needs to get that. Hmm. I found Step Lancers to be more effective than e against Eagles than Knights. Got shredded. The Aztecs by Step Lancers. Well, that that is difficult, Kashtai, because it's also a matter of cost, right? If you're talking competitive 1v1s. Like, it's actually a bit easier to get the Knight uh, composition sometimes, just because you're going to have a lot more villagers on gold. Uh, 
The step lancer food cost can be tricky, but even there, a combination can be really nice. And then you could use the step lancers to maybe snipe some monks too. Green, just focused on some random mills in the middle. Nothing crazy. A blues KD is going to be insane in this game. Orange has a hundred some military though, which is pretty wild. Supplies used to playing goths. Loves the unit spam. Knows how to queue up units, that's for sure. Has forgotten some crucial blacksmith upgrades here. And Bubba says, Supplies, is there anything I can do to have you stop attacking me or help me? Which is a fair question, right? Because I, like I said before, if purple's with blue, it's a completely different situation. I don't see orange making a full-on push with this. I feel like it's can do damage, but there's no siege to back it up. Bubba says, please talk with me and we can work something out. I can't do a 3v1. We'll see if Supplies feels bad about the 3v1 situation, but here comes Yellow with Bomber Cannons. Tricky to keep Siege alive against the Mongols, but if you could push down the castles and the stables, it could be a different situation. I just still feel like the Mangadai just gets so much value, dude. Like, they have 170 kills, a group of 30 units. Yellow was right to come forward with Siege, but now it's all going to die. Supplies, actually allies green and allies blue. Those maybe realizing life will be easier if those two are allies instead of enemies. I feel like Mr. Cat and Ken, they're not going to pick up on this right away. And it just builds up my confidence in picking Bubba and Nerdy Monk as the two favorites here. Man, Olbux is such an insane unit. 95 HP. Obviously, I guess it was just up against Hussars, but like, holy cow. Speaking of units with insane value. Now, obviously, like, you guys probably already know this, but the Polish economy is already super, like, super insane and probably in need of a nerf. And then you've got the cheap cab, which we haven't seen yet from Ken Beamer. That would actually be a really wise idea, I think. Instead of skirmishers, it'd probably just forget about skirms. But I guess he's probably thinking, how do I take good engagements up against the Mangadai? The Skirm is one of your better units for that. Yeah, green continues to attack purple. Because uh, green is in the middle of this battle, so green doesn't know. And purple is going to pull back home. But purple's allied with green right now. And now is going to declare war. So, like, I wonder if this means supplies is going to clear this up and then ally again. Or if supplies is kind of like kind of peeved at green and it's just like well why are you, i tried to ally you why are you still attacking me we're not going to be friends yellow coming it says green which is just giving blue a heads up again sadly we're seeing some a big upgrade missing here in farimbo you get seven plus two from the blacksmith upgrades but then you get additional plus five after farimbo which gives your camel so much additional attack Yellow's played a really good game so far. I know the units themselves have looked a little awkward at times, but everything is going to against the Mangadai. Yellow's had pretty good unit production, pretty good composition, just missing that Farimba upgrade, like I said. Uh, I hate spamming the same question, but T90, have you ever considered Houseboat for a community game? Yeah, I have considered it. Um, I'm just not sure it'd be the best. The thing that... Like, my only experience with doing community game style in Houseboat was Reg Regicide Rumble. Now, granted, that was, like, higher level. But I felt like the the way the map set up could lead to uh, games that are a bit campier than maybe what I'm looking for. And I, I think the surefire way to keep your king alive is to... Well, not the surefire way, but, like, the best way to keep your king alive is to keep it on the islands and then make navy and make towers in there. And I think it, if players play it safely, it's a lot harder to uh, keep your king alive. Or, sorry, it's a lot easier to keep your king alive, and it's a lot harder to snipe. Yellow again pushes in. Yellow will actually take out the group of siege onagers. Well played. Yellow coming. I agree, okay. No, green says supplies, but he says this to everybody. So blue gets this. And then blue's talking to green right now. 
Yes. It definitely feels like Supplies wants to snipe somebody. He doesn't want to do this back and forth battle, but who's he going to snipe? I can't fight green. I'm busy with two others right now. Blue is also chatting a lot, to be fair to him. Well played from green, by the way. Green has been attacked a lot in this game. <laughs> um, now green obviously almost got sniped earlier in the game by the non-fletching player. Uh, but now is like pushing back against two very strong compositions against his army. He's basically like, listen, Blue, like I can't do this forever. We've got to do something. And Bubba says, I'll ally them if they ally me. And Supplies now says, you three stop it. Okay, but like, Supplies, you're also like, your teammates might not like this. Blue, pull back, ally. So Supplies is trying to unite everybody together. But like, what, what happens after you unite these guys? I don't know if it's going to lead to some good <laughs> anything good here. <laughs> okay, here's my question. Like, who is supplies? Who is his allegiance to in the long run? And the answer could be himself. Ken says this is confusing. Uh, supplies saying ally blue, we all get green. And Ken says, isn't that boring for the viewers? Hi, mom. All right, today I learned that Ken's mom watches my content. What's up, Ken's mom? How you doing? Green's is sending troops. Blue has no interest in allying anybody. I think Blue, you know, had mentioned it, but at the end of the day, Blue's still going to continue to fight. And Ken's going to go murder some farmers in front of his mom. Your son's a murderer. Okay. Yeah, yeah he actually lost a lot of trade here, guys. I saw Green say something about it. Uh, that could affect them in the long run. Uh, the trade's going to stop. And also the Gabetto, I think, win this fight. And we'll stay here in uh, for the foreseeable future, at least. Will you help me with orange and yellow afterwards is blue? Ah, it's a bit weird, man. I, the thing I just haven't been able to put my finger on is if supplies talking to blue hurts yellow and hurts orange. Initially, I thought it would, but actually, supplies isn't, isn't like really. The good news is that supplies isn't fighting with blue and with green. He's just chilling there, which is ironic because he did kill Crazy Carter because the videos showed that Crazy Carter doesn't help. <laughs> but I mean, he did help already. And actually, no, 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 I take it back. He's here against green. Poor Green has been trying to feed all this information to Blue. And in all fairness, Blue has been trying his best to help. But Blue is still trying to get supplies to turn. Attack the enemy with more yes. Okay. Will you help me with orange and yellow afterwards? I want a yes or a no before I throw the person helping me away. All right. Supply says yes, 100%. Does this mean Blue? He says, go ahead and get him. Blue is going to give up green. Blue is allowing. He's not going to save green. There's a Mameluke there, by the way. Not a King of Luke. But so blue is like, I guess I have to let green go. And green is running with the king. Green is running with the king. Oh, my God. This could be immediate and swift justice. Community game style. Now, green doesn't know what's being said, but green knows that this is horrible. And green knows the writing is on the wall. And blue is not helping. Oh, my word, man. Guys, this is why we do Exploding Kings, though, right? Because if we didn't have Exploding Kings and green just died, it's like, okay, sad times. Green can get no revenge. But he's looking to find out where the king might be. And from what he can see, because they were allied before, he saw that there was a flag on that castle. And even though there's a couple fakes around here, that is where the king is. And he's going to sacrifice himself to get revenge on Purple, who's doing this backdoor shady deal with Bubba. Now, this could lead to Bubba winning, which might not make Green happy. But will Purple be able to realize this? And Purple realizes Purple's on the move. It's going to be so close. He's going to be right on the edge of the explosion. But I think he survives. He will survive this. 
He loses a lot, obviously, but he does end up surviving. And Ken's now trying to talk to Purple. Purple's heart is probably beating a mile a minute right now, but he's he's lived. Now, are they losing all their trade to six Mangadai? Yes. Is that going to affect them? Of course. Where do we go from here? Bubba says, all right, Purple, I need help. And Supplies says, I go boom. So it's basically like, I can't really help you. So uh, you're going to have to give me a second. <laughs> Dang. Uh, let's look at the resources. So Purple does have a lot of resources, but Purple doesn't really have population right now. But conveniently, is not losing trade to Blue because they're allied, right? So the trade will continue for, for uh, Supplies. Need Refuge Yellow, and Yellow says, come to me. So wait, if you get Refuge from Yellow, though, you can't ever fight Yellow to help Blue, right? Because then Yellow will turn on you. <gasps> he says, Leroy Jenkins! And now he's gonna die! Well, he is dead, excuse me, but Yellow could die, and Yellow says, rip, because Yellow's like, oh, my buddy didn't make it to my base for Refuge. Aww. Poor pal of mine, who I can always trust and always rely on, and now Yellow's dead as well. Man, people have really embraced the explosions in this one. And so now we have two people left. And Bubba just says, 1v1, my guy, and Yellow's like, probably... You know, if you've never had this happen to you when you weren't expecting it, when everything on your screen blows up and you get the your defeated signal, it really scares you. And uh, Yellow says, OMG, the backstab. Yeah, t tell me about it. Wow, okay. Um, Ken says, oh dear, I'm 500-ish ELO. I like the ish. Is that, that could mean a little more, a little less, but it's not like specific enough. I like the ish. And also, you're up against Mongols. <laughs> uh, that's that's a problem here, Ken. Uh, not, not one you can really be helped with. I think even if it was two even players, I think being up against Mongols would be a problem. Ugh. Well. I feel a little bad for yellow, and I feel a little bad for green. Not gonna lie. Like, uh, yellow and green both died because of blue and purple shenanigans and their, uh, their backstabbing plans. However, you can't blame blue at all because blue got exactly what he wanted. Blue says, what do you want to do? Orange says, the answer is yes. Monk Rush 1v1. And blue's like, yeah, I I'm going to pass on that. I mean, at least he asked what he wanted to do first. That was kind of nice. Ken just says, there's no way I'm going to beat you. And yeah, we might see Ken just resign here or do something else because he, he probably realizes there's just no way. We'll be a stomp and sad to watch. Blue's just going to build up and go for it here. Hmm. Green didn't even know he's going to get backstabbed when he nuked Purple. Well, Purple was... Yeah, it was interesting. Purple was attacking him, though. But he didn't know that Blue was kind of allowing it to happen at that time. I think if he would have known that Blue was allowing it to happen, he might have actually exploded Blue. Um, Ken says, I found two sheep. I'm going to send you as a peace offer. Maybe it will work. <laughs> and Bubba isn't expecting there to actually be two sheep, but I believe he's being serious. I'm looking for the sheep right now. He's clearing up the trade. I'm trying my best, guys, but I'm not seeing the sheep. Uh, I apologize. Bad commentator here. My king has company. Oh, whoa, wait. <laughs> whoa, what? <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. I thought yellow was Mr. Innocent. But the only way that these petards would be moving from yellow is if they were in Orange's king. Uh, sorry, in Orange's castle? And I'm going to assume that Ken didn't even know those petards were in there until he ungarrisoned it. And then he was like, wait, what? So yellow, sneaky, sneaky yellow, was putting petards into Orange's castle so he could eventually hop out and then explode 
the, uh, the, the castle and take him out. So Yellow might not have actually backstabbed anyone, but the person he was fighting with the longest was not in his long-term plans, apparently. Yeah, he says, I was preparing. Well, that makes me feel a little uh, better about your death. Not that that's a bad thing. That's a really smart move, but like, you know, you're just not so innocent. Anyways, there is no long-term plan here for Ken uh, besides, you know, soaking it up. You can't explode your king either because the second your king dies, the game's over. There's only two people, so no more explosions will happen here. I think he's just going to end up sacrificing his king. Again, like, the Mangadai are just too strong. And he screams pepperoni. Is that a reference I'm unaware of? Yelling pepperoni? I know Leroy Jenkins. But I haven't seen pepperoni before. Anyways, the king is like a little uncertain about it. You can't blame him. It's like, he doesn't actually want to die. He just doesn't want to be taken captive and tortured by the enemy civilization. So he's like, I want to die. I don't want to die. I'll wait it out a little bit. Um, anywho, I think we're like two minutes behind live time. So I'll speed it up a little bit. Um, and okay, now the king is having third thoughts and is going to run forward. The Polish Civ says pepperoni? Okay. And he says, ram my king down. Actually, we'll take some time, but we are speeding it up a little bit. More damage for hit is more than I expected, and I've never seen a king die to rams before, guys. Boom. Just like that, GG. Again, I think a lot of things went well. For blue in this game we knew blue was coming in here with probably one of the best sieves and maybe the best player maybe sad on that note that the best sieve best player wins this one i know some people really like the, the crazy comeback stories but you know players were a little restless in this one right we had uh nuka wanting to just make things happen real early maybe had somewhere to be you had uh, unfortunately red died because of that you had a uh, couple teams kind of breaking apart, and then even if the teams didn't truly break apart, you had little backdoor deals from time to time. Uh, and the only team that I thought was sacred was orange and yellow, and even that was apparently not the case because Cat was preparing in that castle with some petards for later on in the game. It was a really cool map, though, I have to say. Um, so I think, first off, we should shout out... Um, shoot! He's got, like, a different name on Discord and streams and all this stuff. Oh, God, this is embarrassing. Anyways... Thank you, the map creator. Um, the This is from like some of the food show matches or the delicious map pack, I think you could find. Uh, again, this was based on uh, a row, so fish eggs. And I thought it was actually a pretty cool map. Um, diversified up the food eco in the early game. It was fairly balanced, which is what you want to have in uh, the rest of the game as well. Uh, here we look at the stats. And on these stats, we're going to see that Mongols are pretty darn good. Bubba's pretty solid. 1,000 kills, 500 units lost. Uh, economically speaking, obviously had a bit more there as well. Supplies did have a lot more trade profit than anyone I noticed. And Mr. Cat, maybe that was the Malian's gold lasting longer, or maybe it was also the trade. Uh, Mr. Cat definitely boomed up nicely there. Again, I feel bad for Yellow, but Supplies maybe just didn't have it in him to really reboom there. GG, everybody.